Uh, Mr. Fernandez, what's happening, my man? How you doing? You good? Man's good, man's good. How are you? Good, I'm good, brother. I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for coming in, my friend. Thank you. A uh, couple questions. You know how this thing works. Um, first off, you need to tell people what Fernandez Airlines is. Or is it Fernandez Airways? Which one is it? I think it's called, everyone calls it Juninho Airways. Janine, Not your Fernandez Airways. And what's that? Tell us about that. What's that about? It's this overhead sweep that I started doing at comps. I think from Blue Belt up until now. I don't know. I just like hitting it at comps and stuff and during training. All right. So for, for all of those that don't really know about you, can you tell them sort of where you train and under who you train with as well? So um, Junior Fernandez, I'm a purple belt under Marco Cano. I'm training at Fight Zone London, representing Checkmate. I've uh, been doing it for about six years now, uh, yeah. Is that all with Marco? Yeah, all, all with Marco, years? so from White Belt. You started belt, from, okay. Yeah, from Marco, uh, White Belt all the way to Purple. Fight Zone um, is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best gyms in London. Um, it seems to have one of the best stables in the UK period. You've got the likes of Jackson, you've got Samantha Cook there, you've got Bradley Hill, Chris Newman, who I'm hoping to, to come on here actually. Um, in a bit. And there's obviously a lot of others that I haven't mentioned. Can you mention some other names there that seem maybe people aren't really aware of? From the top of my head, we've also got um, Rodrigo Mariani, uh, Issa Rahman, uh, Abdullah Salam, um, Abdullah Alam, I think that's his name. Uh, you got Scorpion there as well, Nico, Yannick. Uh, who else? So in terms of ages though, so for example, under the lights of the, the coaches, you've got yourselves in terms of age, you're what, 20 now, right? Yeah, I'm 20. So you've got the likes of yourselves, as you said, you've got Rodrigo Mariani, you've got Issa, oh, obviously I know Issa because he used to yeah. be at 99 with us as well, so familiar, big shout out to Issa. Um, what other up and coming sort of kids or, uh, you know, children at Fight Zone should we be looking out for? Uh, you've also got the, the Vera brothers, so Luca, Liam and Luan. Uh, got the black men's as well. But the black men's, yeah, they came yeah. from New School, right? Yeah, they came from okay, New School. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. And you uh, also got uh, Annabelle as well, Oh Matati. So you got a crazy state. Yeah, so the kids team, about. kids team down there is very good. That's what I'm saying about fire zone. Fire they all evolve quickly. <laughs> Who was the toughest person that you've trained with, would you say? That you've trained with? That I've trained with? Yeah. So not competition? Not where? yet. But who you've trained with specifically? I'd say it have to be the older Gomez brother, um, Jonathan Gomez. Jonathan, yeah? Yeah, Jonathan Did Gomez. they both come down? Him yeah, and yeah, yeah. Jensen both came down They together. were here, I think, two, three years ago. Right. After the Europeans, they stayed with me for like three, four months. And that guy, his level is different. Different level, He's huh? different level. Like. Which Obviously, we, we knew each other's games and stuff, but his... His like knowledge for the game like is is completely different level, Great. you know. Um, but like I appreciate the help that he's given me and stuff, and cool. he's made my game, my jiu-jitsu evolve so much to a different level. And it's like it's always humbling to get beaten up from him and stuff. No, absolutely, I can imagine that, man. Is he um what checkmate? Is he checkmate HQ? Or? Yeah, so he's uh, black but under Rico Vieira. Okay, Rico. So okay. then Cantagal right now. Okay. Cool. I think the main thing for me was to talk to you about was 2019 was a, was a mad year for yeah. you. Yeah, well, I think one of my best years. I, I mean, honestly, it started with the pans. Yeah. Talk us through your experience. First of all, entering the pans, did you know immediately, like, boom, that's me, I'm taking that? Or did you have kind of doubts in your head? I mean, what's your mindset when you're going into a major tournament like that? Like, obviously, when it comes to comp, I try my hardest. I train, 
as if like there's no tomorrow. Um, I tried to outwork myself. Like I tried to put in my head like um, my opponents are working harder than me, so I need to you know grind even harder every day. So I was there probably training like three times, four times a day with strength and conditioning and stuff. So um, for pans actually, I got there. I think it was like a week and a half before, because before that I won the Grand Slam in the copper box. So I was there and like, so I was just doing my own thing and stuff. Mm. So when I got there, it was like, you know, I need to make a statement for myself, you know, that this is my year to, you know, put my name up there. Like yeah, I need yeah, to- Yeah, absolutely. And know, obviously for those that don't know, that this was at Blue Belt. Yeah, this at Blue Belt last year. And then, you know, fast forward a, a month or two later, what happened? I won my first world title. World, the world. Yeah. I mean, what was the difference, if any, in the experience between the Pans and the Worlds for you? I think there was more foreigners for the Worlds and the level was so much better as well. Like, I did end up closing out the bracket with one of my mates that I met in the semi-final. He let me go past. Um, I got a shout out as well. Um, Jefferson, thank you for letting me go through. Um, not many people would allow me to, would allow them to do that, yeah, like their teammates yeah. to do that. But obviously, it's like a blessing for them to you know let me go past and represent the team. Um, but yeah, the level's different. The guy that I fought in the final, we fought each other in the pans in the semi final, and obviously, like um, I remember the week before, I was speaking to one of my mates that won last year in the same category, uh, Marcelo Fausto. He won featherweight blue belt 2018. And he was showing me a footlock that he won in the final, like, I think it was like under a minute or something. I was like, you know, I need to try hit this in the comp. And I hit in the comp in the final, actually. Like, first that phase. Was, that, that was, I remember um, actually getting a message of one of my friends, actually. He was watching Flow live at the yeah. time, and I think I was at work. Yeah. And um, honestly, the, 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 it was a, there was a level of excitement around the UK crew because yeah. it, it was big. It was big, and the, the, the way you did it, and then the emotion afterwards, man, that spilled out. And I'm sure everyone who knew you or trained with you kind of sort of felt and understood that emotion that you yeah. showed your team. Because like, I'm not even gonna lie to you, like when I after the after the fight, like I tapped the guy out. I think it was like first minute or so, like all the emotions went out. Like yeah, I just went ballistic, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. I struggled like a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you, like there's always a beauty in the struggle. You know what I'm saying. I struggled down there and stuff. Um, obviously, I keep that behind closed doors, but I felt like on that day I deserved to win. The, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you saw it come out. You saw yeah. it come out. Man. And like, I was in the best shape of my life yeah. as well. Like, yeah. shout out to Peak Strength and Condition as well. They put me in like a physique where mm. man, I felt like I was the Hulk on that day. You know what I'm saying? Of course, of course. But and obviously, was, man, I mean, what's the plan? The plan is to what emulate the same thing again at Purple. Yeah, try to do the same thing at Purple, obviously because yeah. of COVID. I wanted to you know, repeat the same this year and more. We always want to go for new challenges. Like, I'm always learning, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, like, I want to do Brazilian Nationals. I want to do World Pro and stuff, you know, just do a circuit around the world, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Are you sponsored at the moment? Uh, yeah, with King's Kimono. Okay, cool, cool. And um, for me, I wanted to see you do the clean sweep. And the clean sweep wasn't necessarily Abu Dhabi for me, but it was definitely the Euros. The Euro oh. And I think you came up against, I can't remember the fella's name. It was just tough. It was just I a I think grinder. his name was uh, William Carvalho. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I need to double check, but I, the guy was a grinder. The guy yeah, was a cool. grinder. And did you, do you recall that match at all? I remember losing like 7 0. Was it 7 0? Yeah, 7 0. Yeah. What did he feel like? What was, you know, obviously, you again, you competed at the Pans, dust them out. You competed at the Worlds, dust them out. You come up against, uh, how many matches did you have in the Euros? I had five. So you had five, yeah, so you I got to your fifth match. Yeah, I lost the quarter final. And then how, what would, how did ex, you know, kind of explain the, the feeling at that particular point? It's always special to compete in Portugal because obviously I've got my family there and stuff. Like mm. I'm from Angola, but all of my family live in Portugal. So it's like, you know, it's got that added pressure, you know. Big but, up the fam as well. Up but it's, it's calm, I don't really like to put pressure on myself. I like to go out, go there, have fun, test myself with the best in the, in the world, you know what I'm saying? But um, he was he was good, man. He was good. I think he was from like Rio or something like that. Mm. Uh, ZR team, but he, his strength was mm. strong grips, good guard, good like stability, you know, it was hard to move, um, good agility, mobility and stuff. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I lost and I just had to go back to the drawing board. And, I was speaking to Marco after the fight, but Marco was te like, telling one of the guys, one of the black belts from the team, like, if I win this guy, 
I'll win the whole, the whole division, thing. you know. Yeah, yeah. But that was the toughest test. Yeah, of course. Up until now, like, up until Purple, but I think he's the toughest fight that I've had. Yeah. Funny you said Marco Kana there. Tell us about the insight you have with Marco Kana. Because for me, I remember maybe about six or seven years ago, I went to my first ever grappling tournament outside of, well, I think it was in Watford. I was going to say outside mm -hmm. of London just. And um, I remember sitting down in the stands and looking down to the right and seeing, obviously I didn't know it was Marco at the time, but Marco in, in the corner, I saw some dude in, you know, kind of stooping down outside the railings, talking to two people. One of them was Mohammed Yusuf. Yeah, yeah, love yeah. Love Mo, man. That's Big, my brother. Love Mo, he's a good guy, man. Great heart, I love that guy. And another guy, they were both white belts at the time, one guy called Ryan something. Yeah, Ryan I remember, Vegas, But yeah. he was nice, because I remember yeah. he went, he was going through people. And I see this guy stooping down and talking to them so calmly, clear, concise. That's and the amount of attention they were paying to him. And I said to myself, I said, you know what, that's coaching because the respect they were giving him. And so my thing to you is, can you give us an insight as to what it's like to train over that period of time with a, a coach like Karna, or what he does for you and what you feel like he's done, he's done to your game? When I first started, it was kind of tough. Cause it was like, I would go to competitions and it would be, I would be lucky enough to play second or third, but I knew Marco always had that belief in me, you know what I'm saying? Like my mom as well, Jackson as well, but he came like towards blue belt. But um, whatever I needed, he always helped man out. Um, like he's he's very detailed when it comes to positions, a submission. It can be anything, takedowns. Um, he's very precise with his techniques and stuff, and he's very agile and um, very flowy. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I take a bit of my game and Jackson's game as well. That's why I like to combine it into my own thing. But um, yeah, because you were very Conor rescued. But before, obviously, again, before we were talking about before Samantha Cook came in, obviously Bradley came in much later, and then you know Jackson came in. You were very Conor rescued. I remember because he was very, he's very quick. Yeah, you know, it's very like I remember watching him at the London Open about four years ago, man. The, the, the speed on that guy, he was he was pulled guard. I must have turned away for two seconds to talk to someone, <laughs> but he's already in deep bath. So yeah, I mean, and there's a similarity with you in the early part of your. Yeah. Your years Cause as I'm well. very like calm, just the way like he is. Mm. I like to take my time, but if I go for a sweep, I'm gonna make sure I, I get that sweep and I get the two sure. points. Mm. If I go for a triangle, I'm gonna make sure and lock it in properly, so yeah. you know it ends the fight. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way how I like to resemble the same mm. thing with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. The last thing I kind of really want to ask you is about how it works when you have a major tournament mm -hmm. in the States, for example, and you go over to Chetmat HQ and you've got the likes of a Bocesha over there and you've got several other top level guys there, plus people visiting. Mm -hmm. First of all, how does that happen? How does it happen where you're able to go over there to spend a certain period of time to train with these people? What's behind the scenes? How does that come together? Because it's not just been you, it's been Rodrigo, uh, it's been Issa, it's been a, a countless others from Chetmat, that being able to go over to Chetmat HQ and just train. I know that Mohamed Yusuf was, yeah. was there for months. He was there for time. Um, and he started teaching there to a certain yeah, degree, yeah. right? So how does that work? Because um, how I got there was, um, I finished my A-levels, I think it was 2018. And I told my mom, look, I'm just going to take a gap year. I'm just going to go to the States and stuff and see how it is, train there, compete as well. So after, I think in September, I left to go to LA and I was staying there with a friend of mine I stayed there up until beginning of December. I stayed there for like two comps. I think it was Long Beach Open and uh, Orange County Open. Mm. Both IBJF comps. Mm -hmm. Took first in both of them. And um, I feel like when I was there, it's more packed and you get more of like the people coming around from different parts of the world. When it's bigger comps like Nogi Worlds, Worlds, IBJF, um, Pans as well. And after Leo, before I left to go back to the UK in December, Leo invited me to, to the scholarship that they had. So I did Euros the next year in 2019. I lost in the quarterfinals again. Then I did um, Grand, Grand Slam and I won that. And then that's when I went to Pans and stuff. And I stayed there from Pans up until Worlds. Mm. And uh, yeah, we were just staying there, training three, four times a day, yeah. like drilling, yeah. strength and conditioning as yeah. well. And yeah, that's, that's when I saw like the top dogs of the team. Of course, you know what I'm saying? that's what I'm saying. So I mean, that's dogs. dog, because obviously now, 
you can kind of say you're world travelled, you've competed against some top level guys at your level. Yeah. Um, but in your opinion, what I want to know is in the UK, who do you rate around your level? Because obviously you've been in the game a long time. There's a yeah. lot of people that say stuff and there's a lot of people that don't say stuff. And, you know, hand on heart for you, who do you rate around your level in the UK? So in the gear, in the purple butt division, I'd have to say like Faris from YGA. Mm. I fought him once, very strong, very stable. Good guard, good passing, good pressure. Technical? Yeah, very technical. Mm. Um, uh, the blue belt division, I got big up Rodrigo as well. Mm. He pushes me to my limits all the time. Describe his game. What's his game like? Is He's he... very athletic. Right. He likes going for like the flashy movements, you right. know, like flying right. triangles. But he's got flying... the confidence to triangle. Yeah, he does. He, mm. He's a risk taker. You right. know, he, he has no limits. He just goes for it. Whatever happens, happens. You know, and um, he was... I admire Issa's game a lot as well. He's oh, very, he's yeah, I like people like Renato Canuto, you know. Mm. He's got the similar game to him. Like, they don't care. They're going to go for it. They're mm. always going to hunt for the submission, go for the mm. kill. Mm. Um, but mm, there's no, no gi as well. Mm. I feel like I don't really know too much of the no gi scene, but I want to kind of dive into it as well. But I mm. also admire Jackson as well. Yeah, yeah. Marco, like, of I train with these guys. These lot always been my idols growing up, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's why it's such a blessing to be training that fight zone. Cause I've got people like Jackson and Marco mm. that I can refer to. That if I need help, they're always gonna, you know, give me the advice. For sure, for sure. I hear that. And funny enough, we're talking about Ferris, uh, who's just walked through the door. I think he might want to talk to you. <laughs> I think he might want to want to uh, offer offer some some co-hosting. You might have to budge up a little bit though to the left, boys. Oh, what's happening, arch nemesis? Hey, I can't lie. What's your opinion on my man? What's your opinion on my man? Came in the door. No, not what's, even, not even. What's right. your opinion on my man here, for real? Oh, Junior. Oh, man, yeah. I hate them. Junior's a beast. What camera do I look into? This one, this one. Whatever one you want. Junior's a beast, bro. This guy, for sure. You only told me to refer no, about no, the UK no. as well. Oh yeah, the UK. Okay, but he's gonna be world champion, bro, for sure. Bare times. I, I'm gonna say this, isn't it? I believe in this guy. As a younger though, as a younger to, it's not even passing up. What was the age difference? So you're 20, what, four? Four. 24, so four years. 20. Yeah, 20. So that's four years, right? What, what advice would you give him? Because to be I fair, this lie. is fair, to be I don't fair. I think I'm in a position. He's a world champ. Advice. I was going to say he's a world champ. But also, you're four years more advanced. And he competes a lot, but you compete a lot at the same time. I feel like we're almost on the same level though. Do you know what I mean? Rather it's, than it's to like, be like, I can't give him advice because he's been doing jiu-jitsu longer than me. Right. So he knows how it goes, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's probably more invested as well in the culture as he's, he's Angolan, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he speaks Portuguese, you know, mm -hmm. he's more mm -hmm. involved in that sense. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Where I'm do you, put, where do you put him? Where do you place him in the UK? Well, like... Where do you place him in the UK? Am like, I if the, you come to me and say it was Junior Fernandez, I'd say you got, he's got to be in the top five, right? Top I'm three, about, probably. If we're talking about purple belt, you got to put him at the top, top of the stack. Yeah, I'm, are you saying you purple belt? Are you saying purple belt? Are you saying I'm saying in the, in, the, in the UK, because let's be honest, nowadays, belts are belts, but you can have a purple belt fight and a brown belt and a black belt. It's been going on for years, right? I think, for even, example, even if there's in the, a... Even, in the color, even if it was purple and brown, mm. I still think he, in the UK, mm. easily, easily, pro, I, if, if he's not the best in his way, He's definitely top three. He's a good featherweight. Is Reese a featherweight? No, no I think he's light like Mr. Bailey, what's happening? We're calling you out here. You're coming no, on to, uh, to add to this, Mr. Purple Belt. He's a featherweight. Have you spied Reese before? No. No, okay. So that, that could be another comp that's, that's I don't know, actually. Well, I think he's light feather. I think he might be moving uh, up let's to just say, Let's just say on the scale of things, if it, in my opinion, I think probably top three, if not the best, do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I probably thought for sure he's number one. Do you in know the mean? gi? In, in the UK. In the gi? If, in the gi, yeah, mm. for sure. Mm. In no gi, obviously, like, if he wants to get into no gi, he'll probably be the best in no gi this as well. This is the thing you know as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not... Well, let's ask him, he's here. I mean, no say, he said he already said he wants to do no gi, Yeah, the right? transition from gi to no gi isn't as hard as no gi to gi, right? Mm. But it's like, if you want to be the best, you have to do everything, you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Like, that's why in the future I want to get into like the Nogi scene, ADCC and stuff and want to win the trials and whatnot. Yeah. But it's like the first time that I saw you here, like I was just landed in the juvenile blue division, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I saw, I think he was purple, but like no, to no, the, was blue, was towards the end of blue, like he was idle and I saw he smashing everyone. Like, this was 2018. Winning, winning absolutes in London Open and Grand Slam and stuff like that. Mm. And I was just a juvenile, I was like, bro, I need to be at his level, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Cause obviously man's gonna go baby steps like I wanna be the best in London, then like best in UK, then like Europeans, then pans, then walls, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he think... was there, like he was a good stepping yeah, stone yeah. for me. Thank thank you, Ty, for letting me ask the quick fire questions. I think I only got three in. It wasn't that quick, but thank you for letting me do it. Thank you, Junior. My guy. It's my guy. You're you know, know we're in different teams, but you know jujitsu brings us together as community, you know, yes, sir. build friendships and whatnot. Appreciate it. Anything else you want to say, Junior, to, to anyone out? What, what do they look forward to seeing from you in the next coming months or next year, whenever the season kicks in again? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I think this year's been a write-off because of COVID and stuff. But next year, fingers crossed, we're all back in action, you know? So just catch your boy, me and Faris. Competition's coming soon. Love to the people holding me down since day one. And we out here. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Hate means I do something right. So I'm a